Maybe. How about a third time? <laughs> oh, I love that song. I know, Claudia, when I say this, that's the song I have playing in my earpiece when I'm doing my workout. But it's been a while since I've done a workout. <laughs> I love that song. But Etta, Etta James, Peggy. Wow. Oh, she heard you. Oh, She's yeah. back there. <laughs> wow. I can't get up on my Man. Okay, thank you for being here today, everybody. Good to see you. Welcome to Daybreak. Welcome, Daybreak Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 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 You know, a lot of the pictures you've watched on the screen today uh, are photos by Shane Courtney. Now, you recognize that last name. Shane is the brother to our Mark Courtney, who is the director of our creative arts. And he lives in Lewiston, Idaho. And he is a premier photographer. And I watch his stuff all the time on Facebook. And uh, you've seen a lot of it today on the screen. It's just beautiful. Let's give it up for Shane. He's probably watching right now from Thank Lewiston. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Shane, so much for your beautiful photography. Such a talented family. Thank you for the Courtney's. So many of them have gone on to do so many wonderful things for, for the Lord. And again, we want to thank you for being here today. What a, what a wonderful time in the life of the church to see the church coming back. And I mean coming back to the facilities. And we are hearing that in various places now, and that's encouraging. You know, I was just excited yesterday so much to be sitting in the bleachers <laughs> at East Grand Rapids. That's right. And watching, it's been over a year. watching this granddaughter right here play lacrosse. It's been the first time in a year that yep. <laughs> Nina, Grandma, and Granddad have been able to go to a game. Any grandparents out there? Any grandparents? Give it up for the you grandparents. Guys, you guys on. excited about Woo! this? I said to Chad, Chad, I want to know every game is coming up, man. I want to be there. This is so important, but uh, so cool to be there. They won both of their games yesterday. Not that I'm proud or anything, but uh, almost every one of my grandkids are in some sport and mm -hmm. doing, doing quite well. Well, it's been mentioned uh, Wednesday night. I can't wait to see this because uh, <laughs> it's going to be really cool yeah, to great. watch uh, the dinner that was prepared. Yeah. And then Lou's going to do his magic. We had the whole band in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 yeah, that, was, was, great. that was super. And yep. then... Uh, Friday night, Claudia and I are going to do a Good Friday service from our house, and uh, you'll be able to watch it again on Daybreak Live or on one of these five platforms. Man, Daybreak's got a lot of platforms going. So that's Friday night at 7 o'clock, I believe, yep. and we're going to be serving communion. So here's the deal. Go ahead and get ready. Get your uh, salting crackers. Get your uh, juice or whatever, and uh, it's... I've got some surprises I haven't even told you about. Oh. So Friday night at yeah. 7 o'clock, our Good Friday service. Do you know surprise. what today is? Yes, What I is do. today? Palm Sunday. Did you guys know that? Palm Sunday. Yes. Hosanna Sunday. It's Hosanna is the highest. It's celebration time, right? Yes. Give it up for Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. He came into Jerusalem celebrating, but it didn't last long. They went after him, but... Um, Next Sunday is Easter. Mm -hmm. Easter is one of the high Sundays of the whole year. And it's one of the easiest times to, to get people to come with you to church. And so I want to encourage you, encourage you to invite friends. And uh, let them know how we take care of everything. We clean all of these things. You heard seats. about it in the songs. Yeah, wasn't so. that a great song? <laughs> Mark Courtney wrote those fabulous lyrics. Those were good, Mark. But uh, we, we go to every measure we can think of to make it a safe place. And yeah. so I want to encourage, wear your mask if you want. If you don't, that's up to you. A lot of you, I know, are getting your shots. And make sure, make sure when that door opens that you get your vaccination. That's important. Don't make that a political statement. That's life. That's health. And uh, we want to get back to some normalcy, don't we? We yes, can't wait. We, do. we yes. cannot wait. But I want to thank you again for being here as we kick off this holy week and uh, have, have just a, a great week. All right. So um, we have talked about in the past few weeks, <laughs> we've been up here teaching about um, 
when we realized, that, hey, we're getting married this summer. Okay, great. We have no car, no house, no money, uh, no, 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 no job. Yeah, no job. <laughs> Remember I, that? I, I felt that. I felt that. <laughs> But, no. but we, were, we were madly in love. Oh, but we were. Yes. Oh, we still are. We are. Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> in fact, I, you know, I was just thinking about this. I love Uh-oh. you more now really? than I did then. Yeah. E- each year I grow, I grow to love you, <laughs> you more. Make me I'm making you nervous because <laughs> she's thinking, what is he going to yeah. say next? next. <laughs> so nothing really that's uh, no. earth shattering. That, no, that's but, good. Um, yeah. I do. I love you more and more and more. And well, thank you. It's I, amazing. I, it's amazing how God places that love in you and then it just combustes. Is that the combustes? Right? Yeah. That's a new word. <laughs> Combust us. Oh. Yes. Okay. It's a fire between us. Okay. I'm going to go on to the next as we're talking here. She is nervous. I can tell her <laughs> cheeks are turning red right now. And if you can't see that, I can see that up you here. You know what? When we got married... I don't know if you guys, those of you... Who we got married, married in a fever. Hotter than a Brussels sprout? What was it? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, not a Brussels sprout. We got married in a fever. Hotter than you know, a No, I know some of you watching Daybreak Live are going, did I get the right <laughs> place? You got the goofball station. Is this, what, what is this? <laughs> no. Hey, you when are we got... At, you are at Daybreak. You are. This is a church. You're at Daybreak. We actually have fun here. We actually enjoy <laughs> church. <laughs> Okay. Hey, when we got married, I think some of you guys would be the same as this. We, you know, especially I had ideas of what my marriage, what, what my life, my wedded life would be like. What was that? And, and uh, I'm about to share some pictures. And so my first picture is when it comes up, I'll tell you, cozy on the couch. I just thought you would sit together like, you know, when you're on mm-hmm. a date and um, just kind of cozy. I'm cozy, <laughs> cozy up together, and um, it's, you know, just be cozy and together. Go ahead. And I envision the same thing for you know maybe four or five minutes, but then I envision. I I don't know if the picture's up there yet, but this is the way I saw marriage and see marriage, and continue to see marriage. Okay, now then. Um. So. Uh, <laughs> Wonderful times, wonderful yes, times, yes. right? Right, number three. A couple who is like this. <laughs> well, a couple, there we go. A couple who has the elephant in the room. Yes. It, the elephant is right between them, keeping them separated, having problems. And that's what we're going to discuss today about when you have the elephant in your relationship. And you know, this elephant can be in many different kinds of relationships. Yeah. It could be in a boardroom. It could be at your work. It could be at school. It could be wherever. But this elephant, this elephant as we're going to see today, this is serious business. And so if you have unaddressed issues going on in your relationships, that's what we're talking about. Or maybe un address problems or unaddress dysfunctions or unaddress baggage from the past and you've brought that into your relationship or your marriage, there's going to be an elephant. There really will be. So how many of you, you don't need to stand up and say yes or anything, but how many of you have encountered an elephant in your marriage relationship? Are we asking for hands? I, yeah. I, I've got my hand up. Yeah, I, yeah. there's a lot of hands going up. Okay. Some of them are going up slowly, but they're going up. Claudia, I have something that I want to bring you right now, so I just want to prepare you. Well, and while we were going to talk. Oh. So you go right ahead with the message. I'll be back in a while. Okay, we'll just go right on. Um, we were talking about how many of us have encountered an elephant in the room in our marriage relationship. My to me, I would say, how many have I? You know, there's been more than one elephant that we've connected with. And you, you tend to want to... <laughs> Where in the world did you... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Good God. Wes, you didn't do this last service. You, you... Yeah, but this is a very special crowd here right now. Yeah, I see. They're you more, feel more comfortable, don't you? I feel you? much more comfortable right now. <laughs> So we've got the elephant here, 
And we're just he going. He is a cute elephant. How could he sweet? You, how could you eradicate him from the room? I mean, really. Yeah. Look at him. Very sweet. He is sweet. Yeah. Whoops. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there he goes. What's he look like? Well. Oh, he looks good. Look at the side screen. Oh, yeah, he yeah. Looks, he looks great. Yeah, he's okay. So, today... We're going to conclude our series. We've been using this book right here. And this book is called The Second Happy, written by Kevin and Marsha mm -hmm. Myers from the Twelve Stone Church down in Atlanta. We still, I think, have a few in our bookstore. We do. This is one of the most unique books on marriage, or really any relationship. Yes. So I would really encourage you to pick up a copy. I want to, I want to continue where I was. Um, I think we all desire that we want our marriage and our family to be healthy. And, um, but who's going to take care of the elephant? Because you will have one, whether you say so or not. You're going to have an elephant in the room at some point in your marriage, if not many times. And who's going and, to evict it? Uh, and so what was that I word? want you to watch this video of a couple who's trying to get on the same page about the elephant in the room. So, I know we've been avoiding talking about this, but I think we need to address the elephant in the room. I know. I, I know. I just... I would have brought it up sooner, but I just know this isn't going to be a fun conversation to have. So... So... The budget... Your mom. What? Hmm? What did you say? Oh, no, I didn't say anything. <laughs> yes, you did. I said the budget, and did you say my mom? No. No, 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 no. I, I said your mom. Dang it, I couldn't think of anything to say. <laughs> oh. I wouldn't suggest <laughs> no. you end your conversation like that. <laughs> no, no, that's probably not the way. Definitely there is an <laughs> elephant in that room. I think there's several. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> well, everybody starts out happy. I, I've done, I don't know, maybe hundreds of weddings. I've, I've even got some coming up. And um, everybody, everybody I meet with and, you know, just to maybe do a kind of a final counseling, whatever. And they all tell me how happy they are. And this is the most wonderful person in the world. And then something happens and you go, what happens to this relationship? What happens along the way with time? They start getting tense and then there's less happy along the way. And then there's the conclusion, well, Wes, I'm in an unhappy, miserable marriage and I want to get out of it. And more than once, we've seen couples break up, move out, move on. I got a phone call about two and a half weeks ago. It was at night kind of late at night from a friend in a neighboring state. And my friend is a wonderful Christian man. He's a CEO. He's the owner of a company. And he says to me, Wes, I've had the most interesting experience just recently with four different couples, people that I know and love and care for. And their marriages, I thought, were okay. But in, all case, in all, every one of these cases, they have, they have broken up. They have found somebody else. And now... And they've all claimed to be followers of Christ. They've skipped the whole idea of, of, of a, a wedding or whatever. They're now moved in with each other. They're living with each other. And they're pointing things back at me that they think the Bible says and Jesus says. And Wes, I just need help. These are people I love, I care for. What does the Bible say? And I remember taking some time there that evening. We were probably on the phone about an hour. And I just went through about 10 verses and I said to my friend, these verses, they're right here in the scriptures. Your friends need to know what God's word says about the sanctity of marriage and following God's plan. But what happened with these marriages? What happened? An elephant came into their relationship mm -hmm. yeah. and they buried it. They didn't deal with it. I remember back when we uh, bought our first house here, uh, many years ago now, and we kind of got bored with it, a little tired of it, 
and we decided to save some money that we would remodel it. And you remember, we did the basement, yes. we did uh, <laughs> the middle floor, we put new hardwood yep. floors yep. in it, cabinets and everything. And it was prettier than when we first moved in it. And we fell in love with it all over again. Yep. I mean, the house just had, it was kind of magical what happened. I think the same thing can happen with a marriage. Even when it gets boring and it looks like there's no happy there, I think if they will follow God's plan and deal with the elephants here, God can work a miracle in their lives. And I think that's what we've got to work with here today. That's right. We're going to continue, like Wes said earlier, with the book Second Happy. Um, and in this book, it has seven practices. And each, each week we have read them to you. And we have covered, Wes and I have covered four out of seven. Well, Jeff did one and we've done three. So um, the, that first one is break the quit cycle. Number two, hands up prayer. Number three, pick a fair fight. Wes and I did that. Number four, take a knee or two. Jeff has done that one. Number five, don't settle for the hollow Easter, hollow Easter bunny. We did that. Number six, evict the elephant, which we're doing today. And the last practice they talk about is choose your bucket wisely. This oh. book is, is one of the most unique marriage yes, books. It is. And as Wes has said, we do have it still available at the bookstore. So I'm just going to, we're just going to go right to it. I want to ask you guys, what is the elephant right now in the room in your life? What is that elephant? I know you probably came in here today thinking, oh, I can breathe easy. I don't have to think about anything. I'll just listen to Wes and Claudia enjoy the great music. This will be a wonderful day at daybreak. Some of you came thinking that. But right now, what I want you to do, I want you to think about the possible elephant in the room in your life. I want to take you back to the Old Testament to a guy by the name of David, King David. You know the stories of David and Goliath. David wrote most of the Psalms. And I want us to look here at the story of David because I think he would have said, Claudia, if he'd have been around here at that time when he was writing the Psalm, I think Psalms, I think he would have said, you need to evict the elephant. I have no doubt about that. I think that he would have said that. I think he would have said something like this. We'll put it up here on the screen. Because the stress of evicting the elephant is far less than the suffering of living with the elephant. Now, I'm going to say it again That's because right. this is vital. If you're taking notes, get this one down. It's so good. It's get so this true. one down. Because yeah. what Claudia and I see in a lot of relationships, they just kind of deal with the stress. That stress, if left unattended, will eventually eat away the happy out of your relationship. If it's not dealt with, and if you just leave the elephant in the room or you cover it up, it will eat the happy away from your relationship. Let's say it again here. Because the stress of evicting the elephant is what? Far, Far less, less than the suffering of living with the elephant. So if you decide to keep the elephant in the room, in your marriage, in your date life, in your work life... What's going to happen? You will suffer the rest of your life. And again, Claudia and I, we do deal with couples who say, we've lost our happiness. We've lost it. We don't know how to regain it. And basically, we don't even feel like staying married. If you don't know this, you will never evict the elephant in your life. If you don't know the statement that we just made here, if you adopt the elephant like some couples do, they adopt the elephant like it's a pet and they just kind of bring it into their lives and they will suffer the effects the rest of their life. That's our pet. We know it's a part of our marriage. We know that it's a part of our relationship. So let's look at King David's life. I want to just say something here. The Bible does not hide the fact, hide the fact that David was an amazing king. And I love this. Because I've had some people who've come to me and say, I want you to see the bad side of David's life. Why do you hold up? God, God held up David's life high and proud. That David, David was a king. He was a great leader. In fact, he had this huge heart for God. And God was proud of David. 
That's the happy side, the bright side of David's life here. God blessed him. The other part that I want to say here, the Bible doesn't hide these dirty little secrets. This is why I say to people who are running the Bible down, I say, have you ever read the Bible? Have you ever read it cover to cover? Have you ever really analyzed the stories in the Bible? Well, no, I've heard things and I just had somebody to tell me this week something that was unbelievable about kind of the Bible. And I said, that's, that's not in the Bible. Where did you get that? And yet they've heard somebody and that person heard somebody and they go around quoting it as though it was truth. But the Bible doesn't hide the fact that David was a great man. It also doesn't hide the fact that David made a great mess of his life. Could I just say messes? He made many (laughs) messes of his life. In fact, he made many mistakes and he ended up making many sinful decisions in his life as we're gonna see here. But I wanna say this, David paid a huge price. What was it? He suffered. He suffered for most of his life because he covered up the elephant in his life, as we're gonna see. He just pushed it down and nobody would talk about it. Why? Because it's King David. He's the patriarch of the family. She's the matriarch of the family. We don't say anything. And that was the way David was treated in this family. We don't say anything, even though there's this huge elephant in the room. David kept this elephant most of his life. Let's look here in 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 33. King David was what? Shaken. Shaken. He went up to the room over the gateway and he what? Wept. He wept. If only I had died. Mm. I would say he is giving a pretty low experience and time in his life. Would you guys agree to that? Yes. Here he is. He's shaken by the events as we're gonna see here in a moment. He goes up to his bedroom and he just weeps. Have you ever done that? Have you ever just walked into a situation in your life, something is, expo- is exposed or maybe a son or a daughter has broken your heart. You've gone in your bedroom or your bathroom, you've shut the door and you've just wept. That's what happened here with David. And it was over an elephant in his life. Whether you are a Christ follower or not a Christ follower, listen to me on this. God will reveal elephants that are in the room of your life. He is right now. Whether you are a believer or not, I know that's happening. I know that Right now, God is revealing elephants. And those of you that are watching right now on Daybreak Live, let's be honest. It's happening to you right now. God is revealing those elephants. You've, you've thought for a moment, man, I didn't know we were going to get into this today, but wow, I've got that in my life. I've got that in my life. And yes, Wes, you're right. So this elephant, what it starts to do, it starts to put pressure on your life. And when that pressure begins to come down on your life, just like this elephant would be seated on my chest cavity for a moment, and then we begin to add some weight, there is pressure with that. Some people end up with the pressure of an elephant throughout their whole lives. Now, what that pressure does, it begins to take away happy. And that happy most often disappears in your relationships first. Especially if you're married, that pressure begins to work on your happy part of your life and your relationship. And pretty soon it begins to seep out of the room. It doesn't happen in one moment. It doesn't even happen in one day, but it's over a slow period of time. And then it dawns on you, I'm not happy with my marriage. I'm not happy with my relationship. I'm not happy with my date life. I'm not happy at work, the situation that I'm, that I'm in. So let's look a little bit, little bit deeper here. So Claudia? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, maybe today you came to hoping, uh, thinking about, well, maybe I'll hear something today that I can have a better marriage or a, a better date life or a better business life mm-hmm. or better at my relationships. Uh, If you really have that desire, God will reveal the needs that need to happen in your life. That's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
The secret is, is that you first must be willing to evict the elephant out of your own life first before you go to whomever to talk about the elephant in the room. You've got to be willing to pay that price, confess up, and talk with God about what this elephant is representing and what it's causing in your relationships. This takes courage, and it's very hard to do. You know, um, my mom and my dad, I know, loved me. Uh, I just, I, I knew when I walked into the room and dad was there, he would light up. I knew that I was so loved and so taken. You know, dad took me to school, uh, junior high, senior high, and we had the best talks each morning. Uh, Claudia, don't get bound with uh, finance, yeah, blah, blah. Just a lot of good stuff, man. Did he ever tell you who to date? Not to date? Uh, you. <laughs> I was afraid you were going to say that. <laughs> no. He, yeah, he did, but then he, he came back around. Okay, so now that you interrupted me. He saw the light. Okay. <clears throat> it needs to get a little down now. Okay. What, are you, what, what, do you, what do you need to say? Oh, no, I'm listening. Are you? I am. I'm, I'm really listening. Okay. So anyway. <clears throat> Just plow it My up. dad... Um, I was told by not only my grandmother before she passed away, but by other members in our family that my mom and dad, they met in high grade school and junior high. They went to a little small, small school there in Indiana. And, but they went to the United Methodist Church camp together. And that's where they, they both gave their lives to Christ. They both uh, started dating from that point. And from that point on, they um, went to church. Uh, I heard that dad was in these Bible contests. I don't know what you call them. Bible bowl. Bible bowl where you stand up and memorize scripture and he'd win first place every time. And um, I didn't know any of this because um, we just, we had no God in in our home by the time uh, Brent and I came around. When my dad did his residency down in Georgia, things there changed. He started drinking, and um, they stopped going to church, and that was the beginning of their life changing. And so then when I come into view, we're not even going to church at all. We go Christmas and Easter. That's why you hear us say, people will go to church on Christmas and Easter if you take the time to invite them to come with you or you'll meet them here, whatever. That's true. So um, we, we, our family grew apart. We were driving down the main drag uh, there in Evansville. My mom and I were in the car. Mom was driving. And a lady friend of hers who is very close friend, the four, she and her husband and my mom and dad, they, the four of them were very close And the lady honked and waved as usual. And mom just faced forward like she didn't even see the car pass and went straight ahead. And I said, wow, mom, why didn't you honk and wave like you normally do with so-and-so? Long pause. And she looks at me and she goes, your dad's been unfaithful to me with her. I, I, I didn't know what to do with that. So now I start looking through the eyes differently of my father. And then I, I, watch, I watch the elephant in the room get bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, just think if my mom and dad would have gone got counseling, had decided to work this out. So eventually my uh, junior year in high school, we're all out together, the four of us. And... Mom says to Dad, when you go to work tomorrow at your office, you'll be greeted with divorce papers. We're just sitting here, you know, and um, it was awful. What I heard and saw, it was awful. My last image of us being in the home together was my dad walking out with his suits over his shoulder, taking his clothes with him because mom says you're not welcome here. 
I often thought if mom and dad would have taken the time even to go seek counseling from a pastor, um, at this time I had just given my life to Christ, just. And um, I called Wes and I said, you're not going to believe what just happened. And so, um, very difficult. But, we cho- but they chose to leave God out of their home. They made that choice. They made, they made the choice they know better and they knew more. And they were going to take care of their marriage. Well, it ended in divorce. And then that brings all other stuff. You, you're aware of that. But I've often wondered, even when this saying, the elephant in the room, of course, we weren't saying that back then, but I just thought, I wonder if our family could have been held together if someone took the ropes and said, let's make a difference. You know, the elephant won. Yes, he did. The the elephant was never evicted. The elephant was uh, permitted to stay in your mom and dad's uh, lives. When I was listening to you talk there, Claudia, again, I, I go back in my mind to King David about the time he was uh, to be crowned as king, he wrote this Psalm 101. He said, I will walk with integrity of heart within my house, talking about his home. And then he goes, a perverse heart shall be far from me. Now listen, listen to this man this right. This is very good. Pre the elephant in his life. He said, a perverse heart shall be far from me. Far from me. I'm not going to befriend an elephant. I'm not going to have elephants in this palace. And then he says, no one who practices deceit shall dwell in my house. No elephants in the room. So now you go over to 2 Samuel and you see a different side of David. Listen to the different side of David. Here's the story. David is king now. He doesn't even go to war, but he sends his soldiers out to fight his battles in which he should have been the leader, but he allowed the elephant to stay in his life. He stayed home. While he's staying home, he goes out on his balcony. He looks across the way and he sees this beautiful lady and she's bathing. Her name is Bathsheba. And so he calls one of his servants and he says, who's that lady? He finds out who the lady is. He says to the servant, I want you to bring her over here. So he brings, the servant brings Bathsheba to his bedroom, to his bed, and they end up having a baby. David's got to do something about the elephant now in the room. Are you with me? Are you guys with me? He's got an elephant. He's got a serious problem. So how is David, going? the strong guy, the king, who refuses to fight and lead his army? He's got to do something about it. Like a real man, he sends Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, into the front corner where the fiercest fighting was taking place, and he has Uriah killed. Oh, he says, I've got to marry Bathsheba. She's lost her husband, which he had murdered, basically. Isn't that noble of me now to bring Bathsheba into the palace? Nobody's talking about the elephant in the palace. Why? Because he's King David. He keeps it all under wraps. And David now has created all of this mess. He created it. God didn't create it. David created it. Some of you right here today, online and in this auditorium, you have duties where you're supposed to be and you're not. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Things that you were not to be involved in, you got involved in them. That's the elephant. And then you tried to cover it up and the elephant is still there. It's still there. 
So God decides to send his prophet, Nathan, to King David to square up. And so he comes in to King David and David, you know, he's acting like everything is just fine. And he's, you know, one victory after victory. And the prophet says, David, King David, I've got to say something to you. You've just broken four commandments. Covet, you lied, you committed adultery, and you murdered someone. He broke all four of these commandments in hiding the elephant. And so prophet Nathan says to David, what you have done in private is going to be exposed now publicly. You thought you had this elephant all covered up and I'm going to show you something. It's going to be exposed and everybody's going to know about it. Another man is going to sleep with your wife. Now, God did not make this happen. And I've heard some people debate this. God doesn't cause these kinds of things. This was David's decision. He's hiding the elephant. He's created the mess. And now he's involved in big time sin. And he ends up losing the child of this wife. Let's look at 2 Samuel 12. David begged God to spare the child. He went without food and he lay all night on the bare ground. The elders of his household pleaded with him to get up and eat with him, but he refused. And then on the seventh day, the child died. And David's advisors were afraid to tell him. See, they were afraid to mention the elephant. We can't say that to dad. We can't say that to mom. I can't say that to my husband. I can't say that to my wife. I can't say that to my parents. I can't say that to my... And so what we do, we end up burying the elephant. The elephant, though, is still in the room. And that elephant is going to rear its ugly head. As as the prophet said, someday what you did in private is going to be exposed publicly. So David's advisors were afraid to tell him. He wouldn't listen to the reason why the child was ill. They said, what drastic thing will he do when we we tell him the child is dead? And they're already going, we're we're afraid to tell him anything. And what's what's he gonna do when we say, your kid's dead now? So here's David, he's got multiple wives, which was wrong, not caused by God. He made bad decisions. This was not God's design. David has a wife. She has a son. His name is Amnon. And David has another wife, wife too. She has a son. His name is Absalom and a daughter by the name of Tamar. Are you with me? Stay with me. The other wife, the son's name is Amnon. He rapes the second wife's daughter, Tamar. What does David do about it? Anybody know? Nothing. Nothing. Say it with me. Nothing. Nothing. He does nothing about it. Elephant in the room. He covers it up, in fact. Elephant in the family. Nobody says anything. And so what happens here, the son of the second wife named Absalom... He goes into a rage. He sees all this happening. His dad has gone silent. He won't say anything about what's going on. And he turns not only angry, he goes into a rage and he kills his brother, half-brother Amnon, and he runs away because he thinks, wow, I've killed him, I've murdered him, and my half-brother. He comes to his senses, though. He turns around and he comes back to the palace And listen to this. He kicks his own dad out, King David, his dad. He dethrones his dad, kicks David out of the palace, takes over the kingdom now. He's just just murdered his brother. He takes over the palace and over the kingdom. Absalom starts sleeping now with David's concubines or mistresses. And again, this is not God's plan at all. This is sin. Now we have many elephants in the room. We've got hundreds of elephants in the room because the first one wasn't dealt with. David takes over Absalom and now Absalom is even killed. 
Let's come back to the verse I started with a while ago. 2 Samuel 18, 33. The king was what? Shaken. He was shaken. He went up to his bedroom over the gateway and he did what? Wept. He wept. And he went and he said, oh, my son, Absalom, my son, Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. I mean, he's at his wits end. He's at, what's happening here? David did not deal with the elephant. Are you guys with me today? Are you? This is in a lot of families. This is in a lot of marriages. Just sweep it under the carpet. Don't deal with it. Don't deal with it. Don't expose it. And so what happens, we keep the marriage license in the frame, but privately and in the bedroom, we've gone silent. And that happiness under great stress seeps out. That's why the book was written, The Second Happy Here. So what's happening here? The suffering that David could have saved his family from, it has taken over. Now, how about your life? How about your life? As I sit up here and listen to Claudia, that's a very difficult story. I've never heard her tell publicly the story that she just told today. And I know this was very difficult. I saw her notes and there was just a little, she might share that story because it's painful. It's painful to talk about an elephant. But what we do, we keep the elephant and we treat it like the family pet. We don't talk about it. We just cuddle it up, protect it. Don't let the family know about it. All the family already knows about it. Don't let people know what dad's been doing, mom's been doing, who they've been seeing. And that elephant sooner or later begins to raise its head. And oftentimes it destroys not only that generation, but the following generation and sometimes the next generation. Folks, it does not have to end up like that. That's right. What are some of the main elephants that Claudia and I see today? Money. The first part of our marriage, money was out of control in our relationship. It was the elephant. We didn't want anybody to know about it. We guarded the fact that we had maxed out all of our credit cards. The second elephant is escaping. Dad's got this special place he goes to. Mom has her... Shishak. Shishak. Yeah. I just, I'm just learning about I the Shishak. I just saw it on TV or something. <laughs> but we escape. We yep. don't deal with the marriage. We don't deal with the elephant. We just do escape things. We just escape. Another one is health and fitness. I, I don't mind telling you. I, I've, in, in the last few years, this has, been, this has been something very difficult to me. I, I love to sit down and have a big meal. I love to eat. And I have put on weight and I know that it's an elephant. Don't put those two together. I got to deal with that, have been dealing with that. Number four is boundaries. Maybe you're just a big flirt. You know, you don't really mean anything by it. Don't really mean it, but it bothers your mate. You don't talk about it. It's an elephant. You just like to flirt. Boredom. Sex. Claudia and I will be quick to tell you no marriage is perfect. We know that. None. <laughs> Ours is not perfect by a long shot. But I want to say to you, you don't have to live suffering for the rest of your life. Maybe you've suffered up to this point and that elephant has never really been exposed. So you say, what do I do? First of all, number one, evict the elephant inwardly. Get honest. We talked about that three weeks ago. Just get honest. Got to get honest with yourself though. There's an elephant in my life. 
There's an elephant in our relationship. I've got to get honest. I've got to quit hiding stuff. I've got to get honest about it. Number two, evict the elephant outwardly, outwardly. Start talking to your spouse. Don't keep pretending. This is going to go away. Our marriage is going to get better. It never gets better, folks. It gets worse and worse. And eventually there is so much suffering that goes on. The pressure takes over. And you do one or two things. One of you move to the couch, to the basement, because you're brought up in a very religious home. You don't want anybody to think that you're going to divorce. So you pretend you're happily married, but you know that you're not happy at all. Or you just get a divorce like Claudia's mom and dad. Start talking. May be painful, but you just start talking. When you do, you start evicting the elephant out of your relationship, out of this room. And finally, how do we carry this out? One shovel at a time. I don't know if you remember this, Claudia, but when we lived out in Georgetown Forest, I miscalculated how much uh, bark we needed. Uh Uh-huh. And I just said X number of bark. Uh When I got home, it was like the whole driveway was full of bark. And about 20 feet high. (laughs) It it was terrible. I I developed a lot of friends because I started saying to the neighbors, there's no way I'll ever use this. Come over with your wheelbarrow and start taking it. It took me days and days to take one shovel at a time, carry it to the backyard, put it around the pine trees, come into the front yard, put it around. It took days. But how did I do it? One shovel at a time. And we finally got it. You start today, one shovel full at a time. I believe the Holy Spirit is here today. And I believe the Holy Spirit wants to work in your life. Do you believe that? Mm -hmm. Some of you are watching right now and your marriage is hanging on by a thread. Your relationship with somebody's hanging on by a thread. You're dating so it's hanging on by a thread. You've got stuff going on at work. It's hanging on by a thread. There's an elephant that's got to be dealt with. Holy Spirit, I ask you right now just to reveal that elephant. Elephants that may be pressing down on us right now and it's moved into causing great suffering in our lives we don't know what to do about it and God I know right now you are a God of love and mercy and grace and certainly you are of second chances and taking a shovel and moving that dirt one shovel full at a time Lord, you know that person, you know that marriage that needs to get the elephant out. May even today or tomorrow, couples will just sit down and get honest with each other and start talking about the elephant, whatever it is, and start dealing with it. God, we pray this in your name. Amen.